Today we are going to start and we are going to study about gene cloning and PCR basics. So regarding the genetic engineering or recombinant DNA technology, I'm going to start a series of videos and I'll start with the basics of recombinant DNA technology. This is the first video of the series and we'll discuss about the gene cloning and PCR and the early developments in the genetics. So let us start. Uh, w. Sutton, he derived uh, in 1903, he invented that the genes resides on chromosome and later on T. H. Morgan in 1910, he gave the experimental backing to W. Sutton and he also studied the related positions of approximately 2000 genes in Drosophila melangiostra that is fruit fly on its four chromosomes. So that were uh, the very basic studies that were done during 90s, early 90s. Later on in 19, around mid 90s in 1952, Hershey and Chase, they actually concluded that DNA is the genetic material and not protein. So up till now, it was thought that proteins are the uh, components which work as the genetic material, but it was Hershey and Chase who clarified the confusion and they concluded that the genetic material is deoxyribonucleic acid that was done in 1952. Later on, uh, many scientists worked uh, on the path given by Hershey and Chase say Watson and Frick, they gave the double helical structure of DNA. Then later on, uh, in the period from 1954 to 1966, the genetic code was cracked, transcription, translation, all those processes were described and analyzed. Then, then approximately for a few years from 1966 to 1970, there was a period of lag where much of inventions didn't take place and so you can call it as a lag or lull period which didn't give us much conclusions but then in approx in 1971 to 73 there was a major big breakthrough when the technologies like recombinant DNA technology or genetic engineers uh, were given to us along with the uh, recombinant DNA technology the other thing which we got were DNA sequencing techniques. So with the invention of these two things, recombinant DNA technology and DNA sequences, sequencing, many of the molecular biologists or the scientists, they actually were able to study or analyze the genes and uh, they actually could conclude that what aberrations in the genes can lead to which uh, disease say maybe mutation in one gene can cause cancer and other can cause some other deadly disease so that was the like the interrelation between the genes their functionality so all that stuff was were becoming very easier for the scientist with the invention of the technologies like recombinant DNA technology or genetic so uh, along with that came Carrie Mullis he invented PCR in, in 1985. So PCR, what it gave, it gave the strength to our recombinant DNA technology or RDT, right? So if the experiment was considered a little tough or impossible along with gene cloning, it was made easier by PCR. So PCR is polymerase chain reaction. We'll get to the basics or the basic step of PCR. Along uh, the PCR, it solved many problems and it helped many scientists to, uh, you know, amplify the DNA and it gave many answers to the questions like which gene is causing what disease and the gene analysis was made easier with the invention of PCR. So let us move to the basic steps of gene cloning or genetic engineering. What is the uh, main aim of gene cloning? That is cloning. We are making the copies, right? The word cloning in itself means the identical copy of a particular gene. Why we do, the, do that? Because we want to study the particular gene, its functionality, its position, its sequence, the structure of the gene. 
like its components so for that purpose we actually want it in a uh, large amount or in a uh, like sufficient amount we can say so the purpose of gene cloning is to actually amplify the amount of dna or the gene that we have for the purpose of analysis or further studies so that is gene cloning aim is to amplify the dna or to maybe clone it into a proper channel so that we can use the gene for further use so let us go through the basic steps of gene cloning uh, the first very first step is construction of a recombinant dna molecule what is a recombinant dna molecule any dna molecule that contains a foreign dna or a foreign segment of a dna is known as recombinant dna molecule so how do we arrive at this dna molecule say we have a fragment of a dna which have the gene which we want to clone so this fragment contains the gene that needs to be cloned this fragment is inserted into a circular dna molecule known as vector right so when we insert this fragment into the vector we get a recombinant dna molecule later on this recombinant dna molecule or our dna is transferred into the host cell that is basically or mostly it is a bacterial cell and other types of cells are also used in higher studies so the recombinant dna molecule which contains the gene of interest is transferred or transported into the bacterium so here is the bacterium carrying the recombinant dna molecule once the recombinant dna molecule is inside the host cell it starts to make copies of itself uh, like it will multiply the vector molecule will multiply and along with its own dna the fragment which we inserted inside there the gene is also multiplied or cloned so the third step is multiplication of recombinant dna molecule now what happens when the host cell divides upon the division of host cells the vector molecules are also divided or passed on to the progeny or the newly synthesized cells so in so in so by such process the vector molecule containing the dna fragment or the gene of interest is also multiplied and passed on to the other cells and by, like this way we finally got clones or colonies of bacterial cells which are grown in solid media and contains the gene of interest so the gene ultimate gene is cloned along with the cells so the numerous cell division resulting in a clone or the copies or the numerous copies of genes are achieved so these are the basic five steps of gene cloning we'll be discussing all these steps and the vectors and the recombinant or the host cells involved in details in further videos so let's get to the pcr now what is pcr pcr is polymerase chain reaction as i told you but it uh, it's a very different technique from gna uh, like gene cloning rather than a series of manipulations involving living cells that is we don't use living cells here what we use pcr is carried out in a single test tube right we carry the pcr in a single test tube by just mixing dna with a set of reagents and placing the tube in a thermal cycler that is we'll take the dna sample we'll mix it with the reagents in a test tube and we'll put it in a thermocycler that is a thermocycler is a device <clears throat> that enables the mixture to be incubated at series of temperatures that are varied in pre programmed manner that is it will <clears throat> it will increase or decrease the temperature of the mixture in in the plan according to our plan so that is the basic fund of pcr let us quickly go through the steps of pcr what is done like we have the template dna see this is the double stranded dna the first in the first step is the denaturation step what happens in denaturation step the temperature of the mixture the mixture it is heated to 94 degrees celsius what will happen at such high temperature the two strands of dna are separated out 
right so the two strands of dna are separated out and the dna molecule are broken so the denaturation is taking place right in the second step annealing takes place what is annealing the mixture or the reaction mixture we supplied with a small oligonucleotide sequences known as primers these primers will actually anneal to specific positions on the single stranded dna and they will <coughs> They will anneal to the single strands from at these specific positions and these are known as primers. So that is the second step. The temperature here is around 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. In the third step, the temperature is again increased to 74 degrees Celsius, which is the optimum temperature for the DNA tech polymerase to work. I will discuss it later whereas uh, I can just at this point we can tell that tag polymerase is a polymerase type of uh, is an enzyme which can withhold or which can uh, you know uh, tolerate the temperature of 94 degrees Celsius which is requisite of this PCR process so we are using tag polymerase here in the synthesis step not the uh, regular polymerase enzyme so DNA tag polymerase what will it will do at the point of annealing of primers it will start the DNA synthesis in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction so in the third step of synthesis we have actually got two molecules of double stranded DNA that is we started with just one molecule of DNA double stranded DNA and we ended up with two DNA double molecules <coughs> double helical molecules of DNA so what is happening again when uh, after synthesis of the new DNA we will again increase the temperature of mixture to 94 degrees Celsius again the steps of denaturation annealing and synthesis will take place so like this if we like uh, carry on the cycles approximately for 30 times we'll, uh, we can actually get over 130 millions of new double stranded molecules right so that is the complexity and that is the strength of this PCR process with which we get the amplification of DNA molecules that is through three steps denaturation annealing and synthesis and a repeated cycle of these steps along with the particular reagents and uh, proper primers and tag polymerase enzyme we can actually amplify the amount of DNA that we have got in, in any sample now the basic funda of gene cloning and PCR is to achieve a pure sample of a gene like uh, we can just think why do we want a pure sample of a gene see for the studies to be done on a particular gene its impact on a on the functionality its sequence we actually want to uh, separate it from the rest of the genome say if an organism has 4000 genes that's very simple so if it has 4000 genes and we want to actually study just one gene and its functionality the first very basic step will be to separate it from the rest of the genes just one gene so that is the functionality of gene cloning basic function that we can application of gene cloning that we can achieve through it so let us just uh, revise the process of gene cloning by stating the purification of gene like say as I told you that the first step is the pro formation of recombinant DNA molecule in this case when we are purifying let us assume that the DNA fragments or the population of DNA fragments we have different set of genes in all these fragments Let's say gene 1 is present in this segment or fragment, this gene 2 is present in this fragment and gene 3 is present in this fragment. So in this case, each of the fragment containing single gene or let's say maybe separated genes in these fragments are incorporated into separate vectors. So we get a population of recombinant molecules each containing different gene. So let's say this gene is the gene of our interest. So by this process what is happening we are getting 
recombinant DNA molecules, right? And each one of the, these molecules will have different fragments and one of them will have the gene of interest which will be amplified. When this <coughs> recombinant molecules are inserted into the host and plated out, we'll get the colony and the, each of the colony upon division finally will have just one recombinant DNA molecule like so each of these colonies will have the gene of what of a single type so that is how we purify our gene through gene cloning right this colony will have one type of gene the other colony will have second type of gene so like by each colony contains multiple copies of just one recombinant dna molecule that is how we are just getting the pure sample of gene by the process of gene cloning, right? Let's say if we use PCR for getting the pure sample. See, that can be actually be done. We can get uh, pure samples of gene by actually designing the primers. Let's see the primers that we are using if we have the gene of interest between this sequence where the primers are annealing and synthesizing the uh, DNA sequence between them so if we design the gene or the oligonucleotide sequence primers here uh, taking in consideration that our gene lies between these points we can actually automatically select our gene and we can amplify that gene Right? So the problem of selection doesn't lie here. Automatically our gene is amplified using PCR. Right? But you know what? PCR has two limitations. The first is in order for the primers to anneal to the correct positions, either side of the gene of interest, the sequence of these annealing sites must be known. That is, the PCR can be employed only to those genes whose sequence is already known. Why? Because we need to design the primers accordingly so that they are annealing to the either side of the gene of interest. So that is the first limitation. What is the second limitation? There is a limit to the length of DNA sequence that can be copied by PCR. That is only 5 KB can be copied fairly easily and segment up to 40 KB can be dealt with by using specialized techniques. So the length of the DNA sequence that can be copied by PCR is limited. So whereas gene cloning don't have these limitations. So gene cloning is therefore the only way of isolating long genes or those that have never been studied before. So when we want to purify a gene, we want to amplify it and do want to, you know, uh, concentrate our gene of interest, we use two techniques, gene cloning or PCR. Among these, if the sequence of the gene is known, PCR can serve as the purpose. But if the sequence is unknown, the only way to get to the gene and clone it is the technique of gene cloning, right? Uh, but still, you know, PCR has still has many important applications. Let me state a few applications of PCR. Let's say uh, many of the times we want that if the gene is known, sequence of the gene is known, we still want to, you know, isolate it and we want to study it. Let's say there are a protein or set of genes, globin genes in humans. If we uh, we actually want to, you know, isolate it and study it for the test it for the presence of mutations. So we will amplify it with PCR and we will test it for the presence that might cause the disease called thalassemia. So for the identification of thalassemia disease, we uh, amplify the globin protein, human globin genes and uh, look for the mutation present. So that is the application of PCR where the known gene is amplified or cloned, right? Uh, next may be 
say uh, there is a gene from known organism say mouse so what we can do is we can take the mouse gene from the mouse and we can uh, study its sequence if the sequence is known <coughs> sorry we can actually design the primers for the equivalent gene from humans okay so uh, that is generation of primers based on the known sequence from a different organism if we know the sequence of the of a gene from mouse we will use the sequence of the mouse gene we will design the primers for a corresponding gene present in the humans and we will try to amplify it using pcr so that is the second application another clinical application of pcr is we can you design the primers specific for a disease causing dna virus if we know a dna virus that is causing a disease we can actually design the primers uh, corresponding to that virus and if we have a blood sample or a sample from a person we can uh, by using pcr by using specific primers we can detect the presence of the even a single dna molecule of virus is present we can detect it using oligonucleotide primers using pcr technique and we can actually report that that person is uh, uh, like uh, is containing the virus and is uh, it should be treated for that particular disease so that is a very important application of pcr because it can uh, detect a disease at the early onset and actually help the clinical process to be get easier the last uh, fun, uh, application discussed here is pcr can also be used with dna from forensic material such as hair and dried blood stains or even from the bones of long dead humans so we can actually use in forensic sciences this pcr technique can be used in forensic sciences so that's uh, all for today let's just stop us here and yes uh, do tell me in comment section if you like the discussion going on here and if you want any any other topic to be discussed if you are stuck somewhere just press like and just wait for upcoming videos that i'm going to discuss about recombinant dna technology vectors and bacteriophages and other stuff so bye bye guys